friends, relatives, and esteemed chairman, you're probably wondering what we're all doing here today. <laughs> now, let's begin. On April 3rd, the Walt Disney Company will be hosting its annual meeting of shareholders, and we need you to all vote for your board. Remember, it's important you vote only for Disney's 12 nominees using the white proxy card. Do not vote for the Tryon Group or Blackwell's nominees. What you just saw is an ad from the Walt Disney Company urging you, yes, you, shareholder, to vote for its preferred board of directors. Normally, companies don't blast their leadership squabbles onto the airwaves, but about 40% of Disney's shares are owned by individuals who have a financial and perhaps nostalgic interest in the media giant's future. In the end, the current leadership of Disney got its wish. All 12 board members were reelected, while two hedge funds that fought for seats on the board got rejected. That would be the firms mentioned in the ad, Blackwell's Capital, Blackwell's Capital and Tryon Partners, led by investor Nelson Peltz, who criticized Disney's current strategy as too woke. Brooks Barnes has followed this saga from the beginning. He's a senior staff writer for The New York Times. Brooks, thanks so much for being with us. What is this fight about? And it's an iconic company, so what should people who know that it, they know they're Disney, but what, why, should, why should they care about this? Sure. Yeah, I mean, Ludwig von Drake, the duck in that ad, should get a bonus today, I think. He, he did some heavy lifting for Bob <laughs> Iger. <laughs> Um, you know what? What's at the heart of was at the heart of this fight is the stock price. It's uh, lagged, certainly uh, compared to Disney historically, and the hedge funds uh, saw an opportunity to, uh, you know, change, get in uh, on the board and have a say in this strategy. And the reason that you know beyond the boardroom and all the personal agendas at stake uh, in, in play. The reason that that fans uh, really needed to pay attention was uh, or is that the the direction of the company can really change based on this these fights. Uh, the uh, Treon, with the main the main hedge fund, uh, you know, wanted a different direction in streaming, uh, a difference in how even the messages that are embedded in in Disney movies. And Bob Iger, uh, the current head of Disney, won um, for his vision. What is his vision for the company? He has set out this sort of, you know, multi-pronged uh, plan that ranges from spending $60 billion uh, to expand theme parks around the world, to bringing ESPN fully online, to uh, improving movie quality at Marvel and uh, Star Wars movies. And to do all of that, and and by the way, find a successor uh, to take over for uh, himself uh, in two years. So um, it's a lot. Uh, the, the stock price has gone up. There has been um, movement. But uh, for some of these investors, they were saying it's not fast enough and uh, you should, you know, a different course was needed. And that successor question is interesting because Bob Iger once left the company before. The company didn't do so well. So is sure. it basically that? Is that the history that's at play here? Disney has a terrible reputation when it comes to CEO handoffs. Bob Iger himself came to power um, after a shareholder revolt basically forced Michael Eisner to hand over the company. And so now history is repeating itself a little in that Bob Iger has had a very difficult time uh, finding a successor. His hand, he, he delayed his retirement four times uh, there for a start. <laughs> and then his handpicked successor, Bob Chapek, uh, was fired. And then he came back and now is trying to write the company and uh, find, find someone new uh, to take over. So now that this fight is over, does the board that won, um, do they ignore it and act like it never happened? Um, or will the fight change the, the weather a little bit and, and actually create changes in the vision that Iger had or perhaps some other way? It's a great way to put it, change the weather. Uh, it actually, so the, the activists would say that, uh, you know, sure, they didn't get the board seats, but they're, and this is what they did say, that. Uh, they succeeded in sort of really putting, um, stoking the fire under Disney's feet, under the, the board and Iger. They've made all of these changes. Um, Iger would say that, well, we were already doing that. Uh, for example, combining Disney Plus and Hulu, 
uh, you know, uh, all of these other uh, initiatives. Uh, but uh, going forward, it's not like Iger is just now like, okay, I can, you know, go to Disneyland and breathe easy. <laughs> right. uh, he has to execute on these plans. And uh, if he doesn't, uh, you know, these shareholders will be back. And, or other ones will be. And Brooks, as a final question, is there a larger um, uh, change in the media landscape or in the entertainment landscape that Disney is wrestling with that is not unique to Disney? It has its special history with, with uh, succession plans, but is it sure. wrestling with the media environment in a way that affects all media companies? Yes, of course. The main issue is streaming. It affects all of these old line entertainment companies. Um, and one of the issues that was pertinent to this board battle is that the activists said, look, we want you to have not only your streaming uh, division should be profitable, you should have profit margins of up to 15, per, uh, 15 to 20%, which is like Netflix. Disney is saying, well, Netflix had a 10, 12 years, uh, you know, head start on us. Um, so that's some one thing that all of the companies are are wrestling with. And the other one is just the change uh, in their traditional cable channels, right? Um, a lot of or, or all of their profit uh, used to come from not all, but most of the profit used to come from traditional cable, ESPN, Disney Channel, FX, those channels, ABC. And uh, they're just not uh, being watched like they used to be. Yeah, indeed. Brooks Barnes with the New York Times. Thanks so much. Really interesting. Thanks, John.